Welcome to another episode of Kurdistan This Week, where we bring you the latest in the Kurdistan region from NRT Studios in Somani. Last Saturday, nine political parties in the Kurdistan region announced the formation of a joint electoral list called the Kurdistan Alliance and have begun preparing to run candidates during April's provincial elections and governors that include the disputed areas. Among the participating parties are the governing Kurdistan Democratic Party, Patriotic Union of Kurdistan, and Goran Movement, along with the opposition Kurdistan Islamic Group, Kurdistan Islamic Union, and several smaller parties. The provincial elections will take place in all of Iraq's governorates except those in the Kurdistan region. The list is looking to appeal to ethnic Kurds in Kirkuk, Diyala, Saladin, and Nineveh provinces. One notable absence from the group is the New Generation Movement, which has representation in both the Council of Representatives in Baghdad and the Kurdistan Parliament in Erbil. It said that the KDP and PUK had not created the conditions for the region's parties to unite on a common basis. The Kurdistan Parliament approved a raft of changes to its bylaws in a vote on, su on Sunday, with 91 lawmakers voting in favor, a change that would allow MPs to leave their current caucus and either join an existing caucus or form a new one, infuriated lawmakers from smaller parties who charged that it was a move designed to weaken opposition to the government. New Generation MPs said that it would make it easier for the government to peel off lawmakers and dilute the influence of the opposition. The parliament also increased the number of committees to 19, including by forming a specific committee for women's affairs. Another change would mandate that any legislation with a significant financial element would require approval from the government first. Deputy Speaker of the Kurdistan Parliament, Hamid Harami, met with Federal Finance Minister Fouad Hussein last Saturday in Baghdad and expressed the, region's, the Kurdistan region's willingness to transfer the oil that it is already obligated to under the budget agreement. Harami visited along with members of the Energy and Natural Resource and Finance Committees. During the meeting, the delegation from the Kurdistan region emphasized the need for constitutional solutions and that the region's rights and budget share needed to be respected. The region should be sending 250,000 barrels of crude oil per day to the federal government, but has refused to do so. As a result, some payments to Erbil have been cut, although Baghdad has sent what it is obligated to under the law. Although optimism that relations between the region and the federal government was high following the passage of the 2019 budget, the mood has progressively soured as the region's uh, given the region's failure to abide by the law. Crews in Soleimani started installing smart electricity meters in the city's Bakrajo neighborhood on Sunday. General Director of the Electricity Directorate in the city, Salar Hismadin, told NRT Digital Media that the installation of the meters would not cost residents anything and would help to solve their electricity service issues. Hismadin said that the project is backed by the Kurdistan regional government and will reduce electricity consumption in the region by 30 percent. The program has long been a goal of the government. Finally, last Saturday, residents in Somani gathered outside Sara Azadi to play an ancient board game. The royal game of Ur was invented approximately 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia and eventually spread across the ancient world. It is now seeing a revival in the Kurdistan region and Iraq because of an initiative started by faculty and students at the University of Raparin in Rania. Saturday's event was an extension of the initiative's mission to bring history out of the classroom and into the everyday lives of the public. Similar events have already taken place in Rania and Erbil, and future ones are planned in Baghdad and London. But the hope is that the game will take hold in the region's cafes and be played alongside dominoes and taula. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Kurdistan This Week. If you'd like more information on these stories and others, check out our website, nrttv.com forward slash en, and be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.